good morning. What a lovely sunny day. Can you kindly look for somebody to say hello to? But today marks the beginning of Advent. Um, I love one of the cold worships that I did find in preparation to say. It says, don't be quiet. Make a noise. A lot of it. Advent is not a whisper. Mountains do shift. Valleys fill. Roadways are straightened. All creation moves. And we join that journey with song of praise. This is Advent, and this is the invitation. Clear your thought, and let us sing to the Lord, for incarnation is on its way. Let us stand to sing our first hymn as the dear pens for <laughs>
the hiccup that happened is all because of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you what. I did send to Beth U33 in CH4. And then later on, when I did send an email out, did not copy it in. So in her head, she played exactly what I said. <laughs> to do with it, it's all because of me. <laughs> if anybody has a problem with that, see me after. <laughs> Let's bow our heads and pray. Holy God, we gather today like the great crowds that followed you. We are aware of our place among the great crowds of witness coming before and after us. We are aware of our contemporaries, the fragile coming and going of people of faith. Help us to embrace this new season wherever we find ourselves in this present moment. Review your glory. Let us recognize here is your God as we join together in worship today. Merciful God, we recognize we are still in the wilderness, lost in the inequalities, continuing to treat people created in your image as worthless, as second. We are looking for your way, a way of sharing equality, all the great resources of this beautiful planet, a way of respecting the fragile yet resilient world. We are sorry for not only historic wrongs, but for the continuing to perpetuate despite. Forgive us for the close-minded thinking, for the resentful attitudes and hateful tongues, for leaving undone the work of equality. O oh Lord, we ask that you make us clean. Loving God, you gather us as land in your arms and hold us close, gently leading us, and we are grateful that we can be one among many, all people longing to see your glory together. A vision of equality where we hold before us the mouth of the Lord who has spoken. A world where we can all live together. We pray and ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I have been told by Maureen that my daughter is about to do something. I have no idea what she's about to do. <laughs> so, it's not. to join you on that journey. If we are walking towards the future of God being one of us, in whom do we see God? And if Advent is about hope, in what ways can our church be a place of hope? In what ways can our church be a place of hope. And as we think about these things, think about the people often forgotten. 
Think about the people that the world looks at and offers less importance. Think about the people that make their life is so difficult for them. Think about people that the world is so biased against. If this is about hope, in what ways can we offer hope? Let's stand to sing. This time, if anything goes wrong, it's bad. Hymn <laughs> 274, <laughs> comfort, comfort now, my friend. <laughs>
We think of those that are struggling with grief, those that have lost loved ones. We pray and ask that you comfort them. We also pray for our government, the government that has the responsibility for, distrib to, for distributing funds, for supporting those in need, help officials to make wise and caring decisions. While we recognize the responsibility in the writing of the past laws, do not allow us to be caught up in the past that we forget to think of the present. We pray for people in leadership throughout the world today. Illuminate this Advent season with hope for the coming days, hope for equality, hope for evolution, hope for eternity. God of equality, you raise the valleys and make the mountains and hills low. You level the rough ground and smooth out the rugged places. You stretch out your hand and choose to cleanse us. Regardless of our unquenchable greed, our refusal to acknowledge that you hold all life equally deserving of your love. On this first day of Advent, this new season, help us to recognize the grass in our lives, the grass in our institutions, the systems that need to wither, to realize I knew that only you endure forever. Help us to see that the choice is often limited for those with unequal access to resources. Identifying ways to give people an opportunity to say, I do choose. In this season of Advent, shout your new glory. Your hope is for all people, accessible to everyone. We share the good news. We are beginning this journey, the journey of meeting you, Christ, in Christ. We pray in us, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we listen to the reading of the Spirit. tenderly to Jerusalem and to proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, <gasps> that he sh she has received from the Lord's hand double for her sins. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. You who bring good tidings to Zion, Go up on the high mountain. You bring, who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, Here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and his arm rules for him. See, his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies them. He tends his flock like a shepherd. 
He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. May God add his blessing to these readings from his most holy word, and to his name be all glory and praise. Amen. We will stand to sing our next hymn, Make Way. But now 
They were without a king, and they were weak and helpless. And the nations around them were just doing whatever they want with them. They used to be a great society. But now they had been guilty of great rebellion. They had suffered the greatest humiliation. And God had disciplined them. They faced a great challenge, but lacked the human resources. And this message is coming in that distress. Isaiah is bringing a different message. He's bringing hope. Hope amidst cares. Hope that there is going to be a brighter day. You know, this time of the season is perhaps the hardest for me. When I think of it, if I compare the two worlds that I have lived in, back home in Africa, this is the hottest time for us <laughs> and the brightest of the poor. But whenever I live here, sometimes it was yesterday, I'm like, we need to have our tea and our change. It's only half past four. And it's all dark. <laughs> but there's hope that in the morning it's going to be bright. So Isaiah is bringing this <laughs> message that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And that is why this prophet is coming and is telling them to say, friends, get your eyes off yourselves and look by faith to God. He is telling them to change their focus to say, don't look at yourselves. Because when you look at yourselves, you see distress. When you look at others, you are distressed. When you look at yourself, you are depressed. But when you look to God, when you choose to look to God by faith, you are blessed. When you choose to look to God, you find hope. When you choose to look to God, you find strength. And this is exactly what the prophet is saying. He's saying, friends, while you are refugees, while you are in exile, choose to look to God. And friends, this is not just a play of words. This is just not say, ah, what can we say, which is night. This is the truth that we find in God's word. When the outlook is bleak, we need the outlook. We need to look to God. When everything that surrounds us doesn't make sense, when everything that surrounds us is meaningless, when the world that we live in, just tune into any news channel, is depressing. Tune into any news channel, it's frustrating. Don't dare. Tune to your football team. Otherwise, it will, pay, it will perform badly. And again, you're disappointed. Your life is always on the edge. For you never know the outcome of the game. But when you look to God, the outcome is always guaranteed. You find hope in God. There is hope in God. So, he's telling them, lift up your eyes on high. And behold the one who created these things. The one who created everything is stronger and is powerful. Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? <coughs> the help, my help comes from the creator, the maker of the heaven. So what he is saying to these people in these particular passages, amidst your challenges, amidst your difficulties, there is the voice of pardon. The voice of forgiveness. And this advent is what we anticipate. Is that which we look forward to. The voice of forgiveness. When Christ comes to us and says if we confess our sins to him, he is just and faithful and he will forgive us. When we look up to hope in this advent, then we hear that voice that Christ says, your sins are forgiven. There is the voice of pardon. Not only is there the voice of pardon, there is the voice of providence. These Jews had a rough time ahead. They had to rebuild the ruins of Jerusalem. The picture, when he says that there is the voice of providence, that God goes before them, it's as if God goes ahead of them and removes every obstacle and prepares the way for the coming king. 
It is that image of a highway that is cleared for them because God has gone before them. Friends, this Advent, they steal the message of hope. There is that message of providence, of a God who is still in the business of providing for his people. We look up with faith to God and anticipate his provisions each day. Friends, as the Lord clears this way, their way back might not have been easy, but trusting God made it easy. And as I say, there is providence. It's, we, it's not that we are immune to challenges of this life, but when we look up to God in faith, He makes it easy for us. He gives us the strength and the courage to face each day. Not only was there the voice of providence, there was the voice of promise. The promise that says, all flesh is grass, is grass. And this was in the context that those that oppressed Israel were gone away. The Assyrians and the Babylonians were gone. Like grass, these nations and their leaders, they fulfilled their purpose and fed away. But God's word lasts forever. Friends, we have the lasting message of God. The scriptures that we have are a perfect reminder that when everything else around us does not last, God's word lasts forever. And that's the guarantee. That's the assurance that we have to say, whatever I go through in life, I find a place to turn to that is assuring a place that I know that there is hope, there is everything I need in the scriptures. God's word lasts forever. And you see, as he brings this message, it's also packaged with the voice of peace. The peace that says, I'm bringing good tidings, good news. The good news that we have today is that we have a savior. Christ is coming to be among us. Emmanuel God with us. I love this promise. God is with us right here, right now. That's Emmanuel. God with us. We find peace in him. Friends, God's arms are so mighty and powerful to destroy enemies. They are also tender to embrace us when we come to him. When we rush out to him, God is forever with arms that are wide open to say, come, come my daughter, come my son, come. We have that assurance to run to a God who will welcome us. But friend, as we do this, we need to know that this message was not saved in the best circumstances. The seeds of comfort may take root in the soil of adversity. Even when we go through the most horrendous moment of life, we can still find comfort in that. When our lives seem to be falling apart, we can ask God to comfort us. We may not escape the adversity, but you will find God's comfort as you face it. That's where the difference comes in the believers and the non-believers. In that, in our distress, God gives us the strength to deal with it. God gives us that energy to do it. Sometimes, friends, somehow, the only comfort we have is the knowledge that God is present. The knowledge that God is with us. And as I say that, we then need to take a leaf and say, appreciate the comfort, the encouragement that we find in his way. Not only the encouragement we find in God's way, but the encouragement we find in his presence. Not only the encouragement we find in his presence, but the encouragement we find in his people. The encouragement that we bring to one another. And as I say that, we also have to learn to have the gift and the grace to receive encouragement from others. You know, there are some of us that are so difficult to encourage. <laughs> there are 
the people that are so difficult to encourage. They are so difficult. They are so difficult to even receive. Friends, this advent, allow God to allow you to have the gift to receive. Just to receive, be it a card or an organ. It's so embarrassing sometimes when you go and offer something. Oh, you didn't need to do that. Oh, no, 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 I don't need that. Just have the grace to receive. You remember a few weeks ago, we learned about two important words. Do you still remember? Oh, you don't. I'll remind you because I said that. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes have the gift to just say thank you. No explanation needed. Even if you don't need it, just get it. <laughs> Deal with it later. In your own space, in your own what? Time. But have that courage. So the scripture says, it is more blessed to what? To give than to receive, right? So as you receive someone else, that someone else has received that blessing, as they give to you, God has also what? Blessed them. Let us learn to have that. So this picture that we have in the desert, God is saying to them, friends, you are not immune to these troubles, but the faith that we have in God will help you to deal with these things. And friends, the assurance that God's word lasts forever. It was so grateful for God's word. Tell you what, public opinion changes and is so unreliable, but God's word is constant. Our opinions change, friends. Day in, day out. Sometimes to some people they change depending who you're talking to. <laughs> on the same subjects, you have people that are so good at saying this to this one, and so good at saying that person, but it's still the same. People flip flop, they change. But God's word is so constant. And we can trust God's word because it is so constant. The God that never changes, the God that he says to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is the God who is coming to us this Advent. This is the God who is giving us this hope that I don't change like we do. In fact, all of us do change. All of us do change our minds from time to time. If presented with different information and all that, our positions do what? Do change. But God's word is so constant. Friends, we need to acknowledge that this God who is coming this Advent is for us. So who then do you want to join you in this journey of Advent? As we walk towards the incarnation, the coming of God to be among us, who would you want to journey with? Who would you want to bring the message of hope? The message that says God is coming. God is for us. God is with us. God is within us. How then, friends, do we make this church a place of hope? Do you want me to read the list that I have for you? <laughs> <clears throat> How do we make this a place of hope? I don't know. But that is our challenge this Advent to make sure that whoever walks in, those that are already here and those that are to come, they feel that this is a place for hope. May we experience this Advent, Emmanuel, God with us. And may that experience be common to all of us, day in, day out, the God who's coming for hope. Comfort, comfort my people. That's what this Advent is bringing to us. A hope in a hopeless world. This world so longs for hope, but that hope is found in Christ alone. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we are grateful for this Advent. We anticipate your coming. We anticipate you being with us. And we thank you.
for the assurance of your word, that word that is so constant. And sovereign Lord, we offer gifts, not because we are commanded, but because we are grateful. This hopeful season of Advent, take what we have gathered, the fruits of our labors, and help us to distribute them, remembering your justice and equality. Take our very selves. Let us be a gift to people in our community, the community who needs to trust your words of hope, the gifts beyond all measure. And today we join in to say thanks be to God and hear our prayers as we pray together. Our Father. Amen. our last hymn. <laughs> the scouts are here, and I'm sure you know when you see them here during this time of the year, it's a perfect manner. So should you have your cards that you want them to distribute, please uh, give them uh, on your way out. They are here, and thank you for being in our presence. We hope you thoroughly enjoyed so much that you don't want to come back again. <laughs> <laughs> Who stands to sing our last hymn when out of poverty is <laughs> born?
as you know the drill when you come to Tower Karaoke. If you're staying for tea, remain certain. And those that are not staying for tea, I'll deal with you again. <laughs> 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 <laughs>